Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter but not the spirit of request. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, I did the work in advance, but the manager did not believe it. Therefore, on the day the bosses came, I just watched TV and did nothing. The second story, tenant complained that the HOA were not doing anything, so we sent her a response to her letter of complaints. The third story, manager didn't give me a day off on a holiday, so I took my shoes off and spent the day with my feet up on the desk. The first story is, boss makes me rush my work, so I have other plans. I used to work for a holiday company a few years ago. All right company, but the management team I was working for left something to be desired. I worked in entertainment, but in a technical role. Essentially, I was in charge of lighting and sound for a mid-size, up to 2,000 people venue. Most of the year it was a one-person job, with a few bits of help from the other entertainment staff, but there was one point in the year that was really challenging. The company I worked with produced three finale event weekends, where competitions that were run over the course of the year on the multiple sites would have their grand finals, a big celebration, etc., and were generally a great excuse for us to have a few drinks after a lot of chaos. The usual routine was that a few staff from other sites would come to us, help with the prep and run the weekend with us. I would normally get a couple of people to help me set up the tech that was coming in as the budgets were huge and the demands were ridiculous. This particular year my manager took a leave of absence and I was left with the assistant manager, AM. He was, for want of a better phrase, lacking in the management department and was desperately trying to prove himself to be either the boss or manly. Personally, I think that it was because his job was singing and dancing, he took every chance he could to show he was a man. Most dancers I know don't do this, but he was a special case. Now, my job was the closest thing to manly in the department. Think rigging, lifting things, technically heavy, etc. So I was a target of his quite a few times. Anyway, just before this all kicks off, he tells me that he's not giving me anyone to help me this year set up. Not much I can do about this, so I realize I basically got the work of three people to do within a week, with no room for error. So I spend about 20 minutes in our shared office working out a schedule for myself, so that I had enough time to do everything. It meant that was working stupid hours, but it left me with time for food breaks, etc., and I was young, so I thought, who cares? Now, if you've ever done any kind of theater or events work, you'll know that one of the toughest things to do is find time to work on stage while people want to rehearse. I'd even factored this in, but this meant that I was taking breaks while the cast were rehearsing. I'd worked out my schedule with the choreographers in mind, so that every day, bar one, I would take my breaks differently to the dancers, so I could work on stage when they weren't there. The one day I was taking my break at the same time was Wednesday. So Wednesday comes and I'm well ahead of schedule. My AM walks up to me and lets me know that he thinks I'm behind. I explain that I'm not. In fact, I'm far ahead and things were going well. He disagrees and tells me that he needs me to work through my dinner break on stage and that I would get some time later when he and the dancers were rehearsing. He wanted me to do something about lighting, I think, but with the majority of the equipment I had hired not coming the next day, it was pointless me doing anything that break. I tried to explain that I had plans, etc. for my break, but it didn't matter. He put his foot down and was adamant I worked as long as I could. When I bought up the whole not having a break in six hours thing, he claimed that he would give me a break when the dancers returned in an hour or so, but until they started rehearsing, I was to continue working. I was young and slightly intimidated, so I felt I didn't have a choice, so reluctantly I agreed. I was mad as hell, tired and hungry, and had been working my butt off to get this event ready on my own. I set myself up doing pyro instead, as it was a job I was going to do Friday as the last job, and it wasn't what he asked me to do, so it was a little passive-aggressive victory for me. I watched the clock as his and the dancer's one-hour break turned into a two-and-a-half-hour break. I'd done my work. It's amazing how motivated you can be when you're angry, and was waiting for them to arrive. I was about to head out for food myself when he saunters in and asks where I'm going. When I tell him that I'm done with the jobs I can do on stage and I'm getting food, he stopped me and demanded that I stay for his rehearsal to operate the music for him. I was furious, tired, annoyed, and frankly lost for words. I walked out, got some food, took 20 minutes for myself, and came back to a bollocking from him. Words cannot describe how useless this guy was. Anyway, flash forward to the Friday and my act of malicious compliance. I completed my work early on Thursday and so was ready to go. I was already ahead, and my extra time on Wednesday really helped. He had insisted that I was there at 9 a.m. that day ready to go and I was. So I sat in the office for a while, grabbed a snack or two and waited for someone else to come in. No one else did for another hour. He'd given the rest of the department an extra lie but not told me. Fine, not an issue. 
He eventually wanders in, asks what I'm up to and I give him a vague answer. And here's where the malicious compliance comes in. He insisted that I stay around all day to get ready for the opening evening. I wasn't allowed to leave sight and he expected me to be either working on the events or in the office. When I asked about when I can have lunch so I can plan my time, he told me he would tell me when and if all the work was done. The head of entertainment and the head of the business were coming around that afternoon, so he wanted to make a good impression. I didn't comment but made a plan. After doing my general safety checks and after making sure everything was working as it should be, a grand total of 30 minutes work, I sat in my office chair, grabbed his newspaper and read it, over and over. I purposefully sat in my chair doing sod all. He didn't specify what I was meant to be doing in the office, so I took it as a time to relax and watch a bit of Sky TV. He doesn't notice me for about three hours as he's running around trying to do his job and the bits he forgot. That was until he heard the management team were on their way. He comes over asking what I'm up to. I tell him that I'm doing as he asked me to, stay in the office. He told me to get the venue ready or be in the office, so that's what I'm doing. Starting to panic, he told me to go and do something for the events, to essentially look busy. It went something like this. Have you done the lights? Yep. What about... I've got nothing to do. Really, nothing. I've been ahead of schedule all week. But how? Remember that evening you told me to work when I didn't need to? Well, the work I was going to do now, I did then. So, I have nothing to do now. Bob, head of entertainment, is on their way down now, so you need to make sure you're doing something. Okay, will do. I put his paper down and started neatening my desk and filling out my timesheet. You know that kind of busy work where you look like you're doing something, but moments later I was back watching TV. If he wants me to be in the office doing something, I will do. He didn't specify what. A few minutes later, the head of entertainment walks through the door. Seeing me watching TV, he asks me what I'm doing. I fill him in on the situation with me being ahead of schedule earlier in the week, being ordered by AM to work extra time on the Wednesday, and working nearly 10 hours straight by order of the AM without an authorized break. I fill him in the AM's antics overall, and I tell him that this put me well ahead of schedule, and that today the AM called me in earlier than everyone else, and told me to be out there getting things ready or to be in the office. I wasn't allowed to leave the office, and had nothing left to do, so I was waiting for instruction, essentially being on call for the AM if he found me any extra work to do. I pointed out at that point the hours that I'd worked that week, and that as I was effectively on call for the AM, I was recording each and every one of the hours I was sitting in the office that morning, as work, pushing at least 80 predicted hours for that week, and rising if he kept me there till the end of that day without a break. As one of the slightly better paid members of staff, there it was costing the company a fair bit just to have me sit there and watch TV. Bob was annoyed, really annoyed. Annoyed that the AM had broken various employment laws, forced me to work extra time, and had me effectively now being paid to sit in the office and do nothing, because the AM couldn't manage his team ride. He smiled at me and thanked me for my hard work, and told me to grab a long lunch while he chatted at the AM. The AM huffed and puffed and was clearly in a foul mood, but ignored me for the rest of the weekend. Thank God. Turns out he basically had his A handed to him about the legality of what he had done, how I could theoretically have grounds to sue the company, and how he needed to treat his staff better without costing the company a fortune in hours. I must have done something right, as a few months later the AM tried to threaten to leave the company if I wasn't transferred to another side. He was told to quit. Meanwhile, I got a few cushy jobs and a nice manager afterwards. The second story is... HOA Board Campaign to Do Nothing I lived in a small 18-house neighborhood that had a deed-restricted HOA. We had a minimal common area along the main entry street that needed maintenance and some drainage infrastructure that needed to be maintained. Not much work had to be done at all. No one wanted to be on the board, so I ran for the board with the slogan, I will do nothing more than is legally required to fulfill the legal requirements of the HOA. This slogan was enough to get four more neighbors to run with the same slogan. We had the typical committees, all with the same members and with the same idea. Leave everyone alone, fulfill our legal obligations and move on. I was walking down the street one day and was accosted by a neighbor who said, You don't deserve to be president. I replied, you're right, I don't deserve it. This really set her off, so she started yelling at me about all the things I should be doing. Planting a specific kind of flower, forcing her neighbors to do things unregulated by the HOA, etc. So, I invited her to run for president. I told her that she could submit a petition calling for a special election, and I could guarantee that everyone on the board would sign it, and probably vote for her to take on the job. This of course just infuriated her. So she started writing letters to the board complaining about everything. We ignored the letters, which technically was a mistake. 
Our HOA documents required all letters to receive a response. She continued to send letters that had nothing to do with the HOA, so we crafted a malicious compliance response that read, Thank you for your letter to the HOA board. After careful consideration, we've decided to ignore it. We then included instructions on how to call for a special election to have us kicked off the board and promised her the support of all board members if she chose to circulate the required petition. She sold her house and moved. Our board continued with the same philosophy for the 12 years I lived there. Nothing more than legally required and leave everyone the hell alone. We would hold a homeowner's meeting once a year, which was nothing more than a potluck dinner. We had to invite someone from the compliance company who worked for us to make sure we covered everything required for our annual meeting and reporting and we would always have an agenda item under new business. Does everyone promise to be a reasonable adult? I've moved to a new 14 house neighborhood with an HOA. I haven't yet decided if I'll run for the board. Why not dissolve the HOA? An HOA was required for a planned community, which was a type of community in which we lived. Planned communities are built under specific laws and regulations, and one of the requirements is that they have an HOA. In order to disband or form an HOA, you have to have unanimity of all property owners. Assuming we could get the unanimity required to disband the HOA, we would still have the problem that the HOA, as a legal corporation, owned common areas, property owned equally by all homeowners, and we had common infrastructure, a drainage system. The last story is, cost my company $10,000. I worked a full-time shift work job where we changed between two positions based on the day and hours. If we were rostered on Monday to Friday, 6 o'clock to 1800, we were at one position, and weekends, night shifts, 1800 to 6 o'clock, public holidays, we were at the other. We received weekly rosters to show where we were working, and the company faced heavy fines if a position was unmanned. I knew a public holiday was coming up, but the roster had me on the regular Monday through Friday position. I approached my manager and explained, who said she would check it out. Further info, I was told by her head office that I would be the manager when the old manager quit, and while I was on holiday they hired this girl, who had zero experience as a manager or on the site, where I had been on the site for 8 years and had been an assistant manager, so I was not inclined to put myself out to cover for her or the company. When I came in for my next shift, I found a note from her to just follow the roster, even though it was wrong. Sure thing. I spent 12 hours watching movies and doing absolutely nothing at 2.5 times pay, pH rates. I literally took my shoes off and spent the day with my feet up on the desk. The company got a minimum $10,000 fine for not having the other position manned, and the manager got blasted for not using common sense. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.